putting him alone with Poppy. James had called the apartment immediately. No answer. He'd broken all speed limits getting back here, but he was too late. Ash, you snake, he thought. If you hurt her, if you pull one finger on her. He found himself roving over the apartment again, looking for clues as to what happened. Then, in the bedroom, he noticed something pale against the light brown of the pillowcase. A note. He snatched it up and read it, and got colder and colder with every line. By the time he reached the end, he was made of ice and ready to kill. There were little round splashes where the felt tip pen had run. Tears. He was going to break one of Ash's bones for each one. He folded the note carefully and put it in his pocket. Then he took the th few things from his closet and made a call on his cellular phone as he was walking down the stairs of the apartment building. Mum, it's me, he said at the bleep of an answering machine. I'm going to be gone for a few days. Something's come up. If you see Ash, leave me a message. I want to talk with him. He didn't say please. He knew his voice was clipped and sharp, and he didn't care. He hoped his tone would scare her. Just at the moment he felt ready to take on his mother and father and all the vampire elders in the night world. One stake for all of them. He wasn't a child anymore. In the last week he'd been through the crucible. He'd faced death and found love. He was an adult. And filled with a quiet fury that would destroy everything in its path. Everything necessary to get to Poppy. He made other phone calls as he guided the Integra swiftly and expertly through the streets of El Camino. He called the Black Iris and made sure that Ash hadn't turned up there. He called several other Black Flower clubs, even though he didn't expect to find anything. Poppy had said Ash was going to take her far away. But where? Damn you, Ash, he thought. Where? Phil was staring at the TV without really seeing it. How could he be interested in talk shows or infomercials when all he could think about was his sister? His sister, who was maybe watching the same shows and maybe out biting people. He heard the car screech to a stop outside and was, to, and was on his feet before he knew it. Weird how he was absolutely certain of who it was. He must have come to recognise the Integra's engine. He opened the door as James reached the porch. What's up? Come on. James was already heading for the car. There was a deadly energy in his movements, a barely controlled power that Phil had never seen before. White hot fury, leashed but straining. What's wrong? James turned at the driver's side door. Poppy's missing. Phil threw a wild glance round. There was nobody in the street, but the door to the house was open, and James was shouting as if he didn't care who heard. Then the words sank in. What do you mean, she's... Phil broke off and jerked the door to the house shut. Then he went to the Integra. James already had the passenger door open. What do you mean she's missing? Phil said as soon as he was in the car. James gunned the engine. My cousin Ash has taken her someplace. Who's Ash? He's dead, James said, and somehow Philip knew he didn't mean Ash was one of the walking dead. He meant Ash was going to be dead, completely dead, at some point very soon. Well, where's he taken her? I don't know, James said through his teeth. I have no idea. Phil stared a moment, then said, Okay, okay. He didn't understand what was going on, but he could see one thing. James was too angry and too intent on revenge to think logically. He might seem rational, but it was stupid to drive around at 55 miles an hour through a residential zone with no idea of where to go. It was strange that Phil felt comparatively calm. It seemed as if he'd spent the last week being wacko while James played the cool part. But having someone else being hysterical always made Phil go level-headed. Okay, look, he said. Let's take this one step at a time. Slow down, okay? We're going... We might be going in exactly the wrong direction. At that, James eased up on the gas pedal slightly. Okay. Now tell me about Ash. Why is he taking Poppy somewhere? Did he kidnap her? No. He talked her into it. He convinced her that it was dangerous for me if she stuck around here. It was the one thing guaranteed to make her go with him. One hand on the wheel, James fished in his pocket and handed a folded piece of paper to Phil. It was a page torn out of a book. Phil, Philip read the note and swallowed. He glanced at James, who was staring straight ahead at the road. Phil shifted, embarrassed at having intruded on private territory, embarrassed at the sting in his eyes. Your soulmate, Poppy? Well, well. She loves you a lot, he said finally, awkwardly. 
and I'm glad she said goodbye to me. He, he folded the note carefully and tucked it under the emergency rake handle. James picked it up and put it in his pocket again. As she used her feelings to get her away. Nobody can push buttons and pull strings like he can. But why would he want to? First, because he likes girls. He's a real Don Yuan. James glanced at Phil caustically. And now he's got her alone. And second, because he likes to play with things. Like a cat with a mouse. He'll fool around with her for a while. And then when he gets tired of her, he'll hand her over. Philip went still. Who too? The elders. Somebody in charge somewhere who'll realise she's a renegade vampire. And then what? And then they kill her. Phil grabbed the dashboard. Wait a minute. You're telling me that a cousin of yours is going to hand Poppy over to be killed? It's the law. Any good vampire would do the same. My own mother would do it without a second thought. His voice was bitter. And she's a vampire. Ash, Phil said stupidly. James gave him a look. All my cousins are vampires, he said with a short laugh. Then his expression changed and he took his foot off the gas. What's that? Hey, that was a stop sign, Phil yelped. James slammed on the brakes and swung into a U-turn in the middle of the street. He ran over somebody's lawn. What is it? Phil said tightly, still braced against the dashboard. James was looking almost dreamy. I've just realised where, they where they've gone, where he'd take her. He told her some some place safe, where people wouldn't care what she was, but vampires would care. So they're with humans? No. Ash hates humans. He'd want to take her someplace in the night world, some place where he's a big man, and the nearest city that's controlled by the night world is Las Vegas. Phil felt his jaw drop. Las Vegas, controlled by the night world. He had he had the sudden impulse to laugh. Sure, of course it would be. And I always thought it was the Mafia, he said. It is, James said seriously, swerving onto a freeway on ramp. Just a different Mafia. But look, wait, Las Vegas is a big city. It's not actually, but it doesn't matter anyway. I know where they are, because all my cousins aren't vampires. Some of them are witches. Phil's forehead puckered. Oh yeah, and how did you arrange that? I didn't. My great-grandparents did, about 400 years ago. They did a blood tie ceremony with a witch family. The witches aren't my real cousins. They're not r related. They're cross cousins. Adopted family. It probably won't even occur to them that Poppy might not be legal. And that's where Ash would go. They're cross kin, Ash told Poppy. They were driving in the Rasmussen's gold Mercedes, which Ash, in which Ash insisted his Aunt Maddie would want him to take. They won't be suspicious of you. And which is and don't know the signs of being a new wait uh, and witches don't know the signs of being a new vampire the way vampires do poppy just stared at the far horizon it was evening now and a lowering red sun was setting behind them all around them was a weird alien landscape not as brown as poppy would have expected a desert to be more gray green with clumps of gray with clumps of green gray the Joshua trees were strangely beautiful, but also the closest thing to a plant made up of tentacles as she'd ever seen. Most everything had... Most everything growing had spikes. It was oddly fitting as a place to go into exile, Poppy felt. Poppy felt as if she were leaving behind not only her old life, but everything she'd ever found familiar about the earth. I'll take care of you, Ash said caressingly. Poppy didn't even blink. Philip first saw Nevada as a line of lights in the darkness ahead. As they got closer to the state line, the lights resolved into signs, blinking, swarming, flashing neon signs. Whiskey Pete's, they announced. Buffalo Bills, the prima donna. Some guy with a reputation for being a Don Yuan was talking was taking Poppy in this direction?